Hey everyone, I hope that you are having a great day wherever you're finding this video and at whatever time of day you're having. I hope that you're having a great day. If you're not, put in the comment section below. I'd love to pray for you. Yesterday I led my Bible in a Year Zoom group, which I lead on Monday nights, and which are welcome for anybody in the Valley to attend, be a part of, uh, just to be encouraged and to be a part of a group that reads the, through the Bible. And we're in Ezekiel. And yesterday I led a discussion through Ezekiel chapter 1 through 4. And in Ezekiel chapter 1, the prophet, the son of Boosie, which I'm like, Lil Boosie, I had to tell Rob yesterday, I was like, Lil Boosie, uh, what song did he make? And I was like, man, I can't, I can't, and then he was like, Zoom, and I'm like, I don't know that song. Lil Boosie had a one-hit wonder, and he's like, I don't know about that. Lil Boosie don't have no one-hit wonders. Like, that guy had a one-hit wonder, couldn't find it. And I said, but while you, you know, why don't you look for it, Google him, and while you find the one-hit wonder, uh, let me know, and I'm just going to leave the discussion to Ezekiel 1. And Lil Boosie, it's funny because Ezekiel, <laughs> Ezekiel's dad is, it's Boosie, okay, or Boosie, I don't remember. My Hebrew is all funky. Nevertheless, it was like, the song was, wipe me down, doom, 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 wipe me down. I don't know how it goes. I don't know the lyrics to that song, but I think it came out when I was like in eighth grade. Nevertheless, Ezekiel chapter 1, uh, Ezekiel finds himself in exile because Judah has broken covenant with God through their idolatry. God continually warned them, would raise up prophets to, to call them to repentance. Because again, that's what the message of the prophet would do, was Israel or Judah, you've broken covenant with God, repent. Two, if you do not repent, there will be judgment because God disciplines people and there are consequences to your sin. Um, three, but if you don't repent, there's gonna be judgment. But because I'm faithful to my covenant that I've made, with your ancestors, with Abraham, with Isaac, with Jacob, with Moses, because of those, because of that covenant, I am going to provide some hope for you. I'm going to give you a message of hope, and that's what God does. And so, here in Ezekiel chapter one, we get hope. Although Ezekiel and the people of Judah are on the banks by the canal and uh, missing their home. God meets Ezekiel, calls him to be a prophet, and in this vision that he sees, he sees four living creatures. Now, many people tend to think that angels are, you know, like, like human type of people, human type of figures with like two wings or something. Sometimes they can't take human form, but for the most part, there's three different types of angels. There's the seraphim, there's the cherubim, and then there are the living creatures. The living creatures are a little different from in Revelation. They're a little different than the cherubim. But the cherubim here have four faces. Face of an ox, face of an eagle, face of a human, and uh, I can't remember the other face. And then they have calves feet, and then they have four uh, wings, and they got hands under their wings. And these angels guard the presence of God, they guard the holiness of the presence of God. That's what the cherubim do. God sent a cherubim to block entrance back into the garden from Adam and Eve coming back into the garden because that's where God's presence was. The cherubim, images of the cherubim, are on the Ark of the Covenant because they guard God's glory and holiness. And uh, in the temple, there are images of the cherubim because they guard God's holiness and his glory. And the seraphim, or the seraphim, their role is a little different because they, their role is to, their role is to um, sing praises to God, sing holy is the Lord God Almighty. That's, that's uh, the one who was, holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty. The one who was, who is, and is to come. That's the role of the, the seraphim. And uh, these four cherubim, they're going to and fro basically all over the earth. And behind them is the, is the throne of God. And, they, and Ezekiel sees these wheels that are turning. Wheels keep on turning, turning, rolling. And he sees these wheels. And then he sees behind the wheels all kinds of colors. And he sees God as it looks like a human type of figure. That's what Ezekiel sees. Not a human being because God is not a human. Eventually God does become a human in the incarnation, Jesus. But God is on his throne, human type of appearance, 
that's all that it was said about what he looked like other than all the colors that surrounded the throne. And it's important that this throne has wheels because the tabernacle was the presence where was the place where God would dwell with his people or his presence was there where you could meet with God. The temple, Solomon's temple was the place where you could meet with God, where you can dwell in his presence, where man was able to do that. Now the temple is destroyed. Ezekiel is in exile. There is no temple anymore. How can people dwell in God's presence? Well, they're in discipline, they have sinned, but God is faithful to his covenant and he has a throne with wheels on it. And that's important because it shows although when we mess up, although when we have sinned, God has a temple, well God has a, a throne that's got wheels on it. He will meet us, he does not, he cannot be contained by buildings, he cannot be contained by places built with human hands. He goes wherever he pleases. He is able to meet his people in their mess and reconcile them by his grace to himself. He is able to do that because he is faithful to his covenant. He is faithful to his people. And God does that for us. When we have gone through seasons where we have messed up, or we have gone through seasons where we sh should not have done the things that we have done, God meets us in our mess. He's calling us to repent and he's calling us to restore a relationship with him by placing our faith in his son Jesus to be reconciled. That's good news. That's God's got a throne with wheels on it. He can meet you in your mess. Although you have wandered from God, although your family or people that you love have wandered from God, God's got a throne with wheels. Pray for them that God would meet them in their mess. They may feel distant from God. It's not that God has been distant, it's that they have chosen to live a life, or we have chosen to live a life distant from God. Further on, further on, we go into Babylon. But God meets us in Babylon, and he uses people, and God does, and that's where we get Daniel. The book of Daniel 2 comes where God is doing great things in his people, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, and Daniel as well, that God has a remnant. And God does preserve a remnant from Babylon and sends them back eventually, um, 70 years after the exile. 70 years later, he sends them back to rebuild the temple. That's where we get the book of Ezra, the book of Nehemiah, and the book of Haggai. Just wanted to encourage you that this morning. If you found value, like this video. Subscribe to this channel, leave a comment, and I just want to say I love you. Thank you for choosing to watch my videos this morning.